Hi everyone, Stephanie here. This week's tip, we're talking about proprioception after spinal cord injury. So first, what is proprioception? Proprioception is sometimes referred to as our sixth sense. It's our ability to feel our body or our limbs in space. So essentially, what is your body doing? Where is your body? In what orientation are your limbs and your bones? And so you can imagine that having good proprioception is critical for connecting to your body um, in just in a general way and then also in um, movements and movement rediscovery. For um, anyone with complete or even incomplete paralysis, this uh, proprioception can be a little bit fuzzy. And so it's really hard to send signals to areas that you aren't feeling or aren't sensing or aren't um, connecting to. And so you can imagine proprioception, again, is super important if you are looking to access those areas. In addition, tone and specificity can increase with this lack of understanding, this lack of proprioception. Um, it's like your body doesn't really understand what's going on or what's happening, and so it'll just seize and tighten up um, just in case there's a threat. And so increasing your proprioception can help with uh, tone and specificity in the long term. Specifically, I like highlighting the sensory hotspots in your body. Um, these are places like your hands, the bottoms of your feet, your neck, and your face, which are highly innervated by um, sensory nerves. Um, and if you think about it too, these are the areas of your body that are sort of at the end of your body, the end of your limb. And so if you can have better information or proprioception about that end point in your body, then you're more likely to integrate from the tip all the way up um, from your brain and then back down to your tip. So again, hands, feet, neck, and face are all hot spots to work with um, for better proprioception of your whole body. It's a good idea to do these drills before you head into a movement session. Um, ideally, you would do them on your own so that you can prepare your own body. But if you need help, of course, just maybe take five minutes at the beginning of your therapy session to prepare your body. I recommend you try out these drills right now so that you have this experience in your body um, and to pull from for the next time that you go into a therapy session. If you don't have time to do it right now, make sure that you save it and come back to it later. You can do these drills in any area that you're looking to improve your proprioception in. Um, so your arms, your legs, your trunk, your back. Um, if you can't reach those areas, um, you can just have someone help you out. For today, I'm gonna to show the drills just on my arm because that's easiest on camera. But again, you can do them in any area. Just a quick note, um, if you have no sensation in the area that you're trying to improve your proprioception, I recommend doing these drills in an area that you do have some sensation in. So that way you can log that experience. And then when you're working with that other area, you can try to replicate that sensation or that sense in your brain as you're working with that area. So you're kind of telling your brain, okay, this is what it should feel like. And then over time, the theory is that that sensation will develop in those, um, those um, paralyzed areas. First, we need to create a baseline awareness of what these areas are feeling like for you right now. Um, that way, when we do our interventions, we can notice a change. So go ahead and close your eyes and just notice what's happening um, in that area of the body that you're looking to improve. How does one side feel compared to the other? What sensations at all, if at all, do you feel? Is there tightness, tingling, pain? Maybe subtle pressures of where your body is touching a surface. Maybe you have no sensation at all. Maybe you just have a visual kind of mapping of what it should feel like. Now let's get into some sensory interventions that you can use to help increase, to kind of dial up that sensation. So first is touch. Um, you can use the palm of your hand or someone else's hand, and you're just going to gently rub in that area. So rubbing all the way from the shoulder all the way down to your hands. We talked about um, the hot spots in the hands, and I'll get there in a second. Just the simple act of rubbing skin stimulates the nerves just underneath the skin to give you a better idea of that limb. 
You can also use um, some sort of textured surface like a spiky ball or a hairbrush or a comb and run that over the area too. And it's, it's nice to have two different stimuluses, two different types of touch on. Um, your brain kind of might think, oh, well, that's kind of interesting because that's kind of different from what we did on, right before this. And then, yeah, make sure that you're getting all the way through your palm. Again, your hand is a sensory hotspot, so we want to make sure that, that that's engaged. And you can also use, um, like, scratching. So if you want to take something a little bit more harsh, like a nail or maybe a comb would even be more harsh, and so you can scratch that area too. Um, obviously don't break the skin, um, but just that little bit of scratching can kind of bring some blood flow to the surface as well and again stimulate those nerves that we were talking about under the skin. Another thing I really like doing is adding some sort of vibration to the limb. So um, you can do this, you don't need any fancy tools, you can just do this by pounding on the limb. And um, I'm not going to do any more of that just because it's annoying, but go ahead and continue doing that. Just pounding on the limb, bringing that subtle vibration through the skin, down through the muscles, down into your bone. And then I also like clapping because that gives almost like um, an impact through the end joint. If you think about it, it would be like jumping, but through your hands. And if you're doing this with your feet, you would just um, pound your feet on the floor, maybe with someone helping you or doing it yourself. Cool. If you want to get fancy, you can use a vibration tool. Um, sometimes I use this vibrating roller on uh, clients. I'll put it on the hand and maybe on the bottom of the feet. It just vibrates uh, and definitely brings a lot of sensation to the end point. Sometimes I'll just have clients hold it. And there's that. If your tone or spasms did increase with any of these interventions, start with some of the lighter interventions, just like petting, rubbing, and light textures. Um, the vibration could have been a little bit too invasive and a little bit too much of a shock. And so your body's response again is just to be tightened up to um, keep the joint safe, just in case. So now after some of those sensory interventions, go ahead and close your eyes and take notice. How does the side that you just worked with how does that feel different from the side that you did not work with? Hopefully you feel a little bit of something more in that one side, maybe warmth, maybe tingling. Some people describe it as breezy, light. And then if you did feel a positive change, it's definitely worth doing the other side. I'm not gonna do that with you today, but you can rewind this video and try it out on the other side. We would love to hear what you think about these little drills, these simple drills. Make sure that you are trying them out before your therapy sessions. Let us know how it goes and share with us in the comments so that other people can hear your experiences.